If the people wanted a little trade deadline drama, they got it early. We have our first significant trade of the season at the deadline. And here are the details. It involves four teams. Houston gets Robert Covington and Jordan mm. Bell. Atlanta picked up Clint Capella and Nene. Minnesota gets Beasley, Hernan Gomez, Turner, Vanderpilt, Atlanta's first round pick via Brooklyn, and Denver gets Napier, Green, Bonley, Bates Diop, and Houston's first round pick. Jalen, we start <laughs> with Houston. I love Houston this. Houston didn't play Nene. Clint Capella was basically their only center. So now they have not just committed to small ball once in a while. They are all in on small ball. What do you think about the Houston Rockets asking P.J. Tucker to jump center before the game? <laughs> so they're basically reinvest reinvesting in their roster. When you bring James Harden, a ball-dominant guy, into a season and he got a chance to average almost 40, and you add Russell Westbrook to the squad, and Russell's an inefficient three-point shooter, now you need to create space for him to play mid-range, to play on the post, and that has unlocked Russell's game. So now what are you going to do around them? They're going to be your centerpieces. We know P.J. Tucker can guard multiple positions, but I agree with you. Having him play a lot of five and jump a center, that would be a funny visual. I think the dynamic that we're underselling in this is Jordan Bell. Good point. He's going to be too. a guy that's going to play up front, give him some strong minutes at the four, some undersized minutes at the five. He has a chance. He won't be as productive as this person. They hope that he becomes what Montrez Harrell is doing mm. kind of for the Clippers in a lot of ways. He, he's going to seem undersized, but at the same time, he's a good rim roller and a finisher. He's going to be able to get out there on pick and roll situations defensively. So I, I like what Houston did. Clint Capella is still a productive player, and I think he's going to add a lot of value to the Hawks. You know what? Houston has always kind of been, or at least tried to be, a step or two of head of the rest of the league in terms of the evolution of the game with the way that they shoot three-pointers. And I, I believe in Daryl Morey, not just because he always provides us something to talk about with making moves like this all the time, but also because, like, he tries to be a step ahead. And he looked at, surveyed the Western Conference and said, I don't know if we have what it takes right now. And I'm glad you brought up Jordan Bell because they are going to be small, but Bell can cover some fives, and they will use him. And I'm also glad you brought up Montez Harrell because he was on the Rockets, and they let him get away. But, Jalen, what does Covington, like, what does Covington, like a 3 and D guy, a 3 and D guy, what does he bring to the Rockets roster? So, again, now you just added a couple of interchangeable parts. Covington is a capable three-point shooter that, again, guard multiple positions on the perimeter. And you're just trying to create space. You're trying to create switches. And you hope guys are going to be able to make open shots. That, that's really what they're doing. They're reinvesting in their style of play. We all know who Mike D'Antoni is. We know how fast they, he wants his teams to play. And like you said, Daryl Morey will reinvent his roster. Look at the landscape of the West. You don't have the Lakers bigs of Anthony Davis, Dwight Howard, and JaVale McGee. You don't have somebody that can slow down the Joker. He's just too good. You don't have anybody that's going to oppose Rudy Gobert in the paint. Look at Porzingis, a seven-footer making threes for the Mavs. So you just got to play a, a smaller version of what you've already been. And you know Mike D'Antoni is not a defensive-focused coach, to say the least. So now it's simple for him. Switch everything. Just switch everything. We don't have, we don't, what are we doing on defense? Switch everything. That's what we're doing on defense. Let's talk about offense again. But I also want to talk about a different offense, and that is of the Atlanta Hawks. I love Trey Young so much. He's such a fantastic player to watch, and his development has been much quicker than I expected. And the sneaky winner of all of this is Trey Young because now he's been throwing lobs, but now he's got a real rim runner in Capella to catch and dunk those lobs. How do you think this changes the Hawks, who are a terrible basketball team, but are looking to get better soon? So in an era of what's considered pace and space and where teams are downsizing, you know, I continue to highlight the distinction of several bigs in the game. Are they there because of their skill, dribble, pass, and shoot, make plays for others? 
Are they there because of their will? Rebound, block shots, rim run, that type of player. The latter is who Clint Capella is. But now all of a sudden you insert him into the East, he becomes a lot better than people realize Mm -hmm. because the centers on that side of the conference, you have Joel Embiid, he's going to deal with some injury issues, but he's shown to be one of the top talents in the game. Indiana, they play Miles Miles Turner a lot at the five spot. Toronto, they're using Gasol and they're using Serge Ibaka. So the Boston Celtics, they use multiple guys. So he now becomes one of the better bigs in that conference. And you put him next to Collins. Trey, you know he's going to pull up from 30-plus feet. Now all of a sudden you have somebody that's going to be a finisher down low. He's going to be really productive for them. So, Jalen, what does this tell you about what the Minnesota Timberwolves are thinking and what they're doing? Well, if I was them, I would be thinking about trying to keep my anchor, Carl Anthony Towns, who didn't make All-Star but puts up astronomical numbers and has to show if he could be the best player on a contending team, flip Wiggins' contract somehow, some way, and see if I could pair Big Cat with his good friend D'Angelo Russell. We see that he's being shot by the Golden State Warriors now, if you're able to pair those guys up in Minnesota, you keep them both for a long time. If you're not able to do that, you ultimately make Cat unhappy and you may lose him mentally short term. In the offseason, he may decide he doesn't want to be there anymore. We're so glad you're watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, make sure you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there.